Today my walk has included going through part of the cemetery in my neighborhood and one of the things I've been reflecting on during my walk here today is is the death of habits and, um, and the reason I've been thinking about that is because recently I've been asked about like how to stop um, particular habits and ones that one particular one that continues to keep coming up is how to stop needing attention from a sexual partner or multiple sexual partners and so on my walk today I got thinking about the death of my own need to um, you know like require men to prove my worth and to need their attention and and it was a habit I've had I had for for many years it started when I was a teenager and it continued um, really significantly in, into my 20s and then started to peter out in my in my early 30s and and now it's I consider the habit to be broken um, and and so I do consider it a death of a habit and and so I've been reflecting on what it took for that habit to die for me for it to fall away and for something else to take its place and and one thing that it required was for me to start building up my self-worth and because so you know that I my tr my coaching practice focuses specifically on trauma recovery, and um, I tend to get a lot of individuals in my practice who have experienced sexual violations, like I have, and it's very common amongst uh, uh, victims of sexual violence um, to be promiscuous. It's it's very common, and. Um, and a lot of it stems from our, our lack of self-worth and low self-esteem that often comes with, with sexual violations. And so because I couldn't feel worthy on my own, I was needing men to tell me that I was worthy and that I was lovable and that I was beautiful and and all these things i was needing someone else to tell me these things or show me these things um, because i didn't believe them myself and so the only way that i stopped again needing men to affirm for me that i was worthy and lovable and desirable was i had to believe it for myself and and one thing that um, you know, happened when I decided, I had to first decide that I want to stop that destructive behavior. I wanted to stop sleeping with so many men. And so what I did to begin, and I want to share my story in case um, it's helpful to you if you're in a similar situation, is the first thing I had to do is, again, say, I don't want to hurt myself in this way anymore. But at that point, I didn't love myself still. I loved myself enough to say, I want to stop hurting myself, but I didn't love myself enough to stop having casual sex with random people. And so what I did instead, while I built up my belief in self-worth, um, my belief in myself and my self-worth, is I kept around a few men that um, I felt were not toxic. Like I knew in some way I was still, you know, harming myself by the casual sex, but they weren't mean to me. In many ways, we were friends. And so we enjoyed spending time with each other besides just sex. And so what I did is I, I kept, you know, a few men around um, for that purpose. And, um, and I knew, like, we both, you know, each of us knew this wasn't going anywhere. Um, but we still, there was a certain level of, of respect and, again, friendship. So, so that made me feel better. At least I was not harming myself by putting men in my life who were treating me like crap. You know, I had, was exhibiting some level of control over um, the men I was choosing um, to have in my life to fill this need of proving my self-worth. 
okay, well, I could build it up myself. And so that's the first thing I did. And then what started to happen is I was trying to find ways to build up my confidence and my belief in myself. And at that point, I was very heavy. I was over 220 pounds and um, I was considered morbidly obese because I had sleep apnea and high cholesterol. I wasn't even 30 years old yet. And so the first thing I needed to do or felt that I needed to do after I decided to eliminate the toxic men from my life is I decided I needed to lose weight. And yes, I mean, there's something to say about loving your body at any size, but I was hurting myself. I mean, I was literally the weight was creating disease in my body. And so I, I needed to lose the weight. And I knew for myself that I wouldn't just lose, go to the gym, for example, and eat healthy because it was good for me. That I wasn't at a place to do that in my life. But I knew that I've always liked to walk. I've always liked to be outside. And so what I started to do is I started to look for meetup groups. So on meetup.com, I went there and started to look for groups. And I looked for walking groups and hiking groups. And, and when I was walking even up a little hill when I was morbidly obese, it felt like I was climbing Mount Everest like every single time. So sometimes what people would consider an easy walk, I felt like was super challenging. But what happened is each time I did the walk or the hike and it felt so hard, but I did it, I started to feel really proud of myself and I wanted to continue to feel that pride in myself. So I kept coming back for more. And as I kept walking and I started doing bigger hikes, I started to lose weight and my body got stronger. I could go faster. I could go farther without getting tired. And that made me feel even more proud of myself. And then eventually it led to me <laughs> climbing really big mountains all around the world. <laughs> um, I got really obsessed with it and really loved um, the, the feeling that I had that knowing my body was so strong and getting stronger every day. And why I share this with you is because this was a really critical part of me um, starting to eliminate, and I got to change my position here um, a little bit, is to start eliminating toxic men from my life and eliminating the need to um, have sex with men to prove my worth is I was able to prove my worth um, to myself. And so I really encourage, and it doesn't have to be hiking, but I really encourage physical activity for, for many reasons, not just to overcome promiscuity, but, um, but see, physical activity helps our, our health, but it also releases, especially if we get our heart rate up, releases a whole host of feel-good chemicals. And so that release of chemicals that we get from exercising, um, particularly getting our heart rate up, um, will many times give us the feeling that we're needing the chemical releases in our body, and it'll make it so we don't need the release from like sex, for example. The release of chemicals that we get during sex is very similar to the release of chemicals that we get during vigorous exercise. And so what I started to find is that pushing myself physically not only made me start to feel more confident, more proud of myself, but it also made me feel better, you know, on a physiological level and I didn't crave the need for male attention so much um, and it was just for so many reasons and if you don't know I taught anatomy and physiology for many years and so I understand on an anatomical physiological level um, why why it made perfect sense that um, the hiking began to eliminate my need for for sex and especially in, in, in sex is very natural. Don't get me wrong. Sex is very natural and it serves a purpose in life. But I'm talking about in, in needing it in a harmful way. And I, I was definitely harming myself through my need for, for sex and my need for, for um, companionship. 
um, in my case, from the opposite sex. So I, um, so it was hurting me. And another thing that I started to do is, you know, of course there were times that I still wanted male companionship, even after I started hiking. And so what I would start to do is sit and reflect before I would reach out to a male partner. I had this terrible habit of going to bars. I loved playing pool and darts. And so I would, I would go and I'd, you know, play these games and I'm very chatty and I would just pick up random men. So before I, if I had the desire to reach out to a male partner, I had the desire to go to a bar and pick up a man, I would stop and, and reflect on what was happening in that moment. You know, why was I feeling that way? And many times I would journal about it. Sometimes I would just sit and reflect. And I would ask, you know, what's happening? What feeling am I trying to get? Or what feeling am I trying to avoid having or to get rid of? Um, by by needing male affection and is there another way that I could fill that need and sometimes I would go for a walk and um, I used to paint I used to oil paint and so sometimes I would do something creative like work on one of my paintings um, for a bit and 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 sometimes I would still choose to go to the bar reach out to male companionship a male companion after I did that activity and sometimes I didn't um, sometimes I chose to the go, go to the bar and sometimes I didn't. But what I made sure to do is if I did choose to reach out to a male companion, if I did choose to go to a bar for male companionship, what I did after was reflect on it. And I tried not to reflect on a way where I would become, you know, fill myself with shame and regret over falling into an old pattern, but I'd instead reflect on whether that interaction made me feel better afterward? Did it give me what I was looking for? And what I started to realize is that I didn't actually feel better after these interactions. That I thought in my mind that by pursuing these interactions I was going to feel better, but the reality was that I, I didn't feel better. And so bringing that a level of awareness to my mind that this need that I was seeking um, you know, wasn't being fulfilled by the interaction, that was very enlightening to me and, and helped me in the future as a reason, you know, like I kept in my back pocket as a reason to not pursue a future, you know, sexual encounter with somebody. And, and I also started to pay attention to the way that the men would treat me and, 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 and that was important to me. And so people are coming. So I'm like, I don't want to really be talking about this while people are walking by. It's um, very sometimes taboo and especially being in a cemetery talking about it. And so, um, and, but I encourage you if you're in this same boat that you, you try some of these things and, and maybe you try journaling before you reach out to, um, you know, a partner. Maybe you try exercising and, or maybe you try something else. But if what you're doing right now is not working for you, I encourage you to change it. And you don't have to do what I did, but do something different than what you've been doing. And, and I will assume that if you are being promiscuous like I was, that it is because you've experienced some form of trauma in your life. And what you have to know is that, um, that you have to eventually address your trauma. Yes, you can try addressing the symptoms of your trauma, like promiscuity is a symptom of your trauma, but addressing the symptoms is not going to you know, fully address the trauma itself. And, and so if you're not ready to address the trauma you've experienced, then go ahead and address the symptoms if that's all you can do, because that's all I could do. I did, couldn't go fully into, um, 
addressing the fact that, you know, eight different men had sexually violated me between the ages of nine and 19. I didn't address that until my late thirties because I couldn't. So I had to address the symptoms of my trauma first. I had to address the being morbidly obese. I had to address the promiscuity. I had to address the fact that I couldn't work for a period of time. I had to address all of these things had to be addressed first because I couldn't address the traumas first. I just wasn't there. And as I started building tools and re inner resources by addressing the symptoms, I was strong enough to start addressing the trauma, but I had to address the trauma. And, and I know I tried myself to ignore it and just pretend that it was gonna go away but it was still festering and eating away at my soul bit by bit, even if I chose to ignore it, it was still there. And so, um, so it has to be addressed and it's, it's so hard, um, but it'll take time, um, but over time it'll, it'll be worth it. Um, it's very freeing um, to be able to sort of release this anchor, you know, that this trauma, it's just such an anchor that we have in our life and, and we can do things to chip away at it bit by bit. And so of course, if you have any questions along the way, just, just ask and I'll be happy to help and I wish you well on your journey. Bye for now.